Okay, it's February 13th, it's a Saturday, and we've got a real snowy day out there in Ottawa. So I'm locked in, and I figured, well, what better way to spend the day than learn a new game? So I got banished all their fears just last week, and it's going to contain the battles of Near Winden, July 29th, 1693, which was part of the War of the League of Augsburg. This is a battle and a war of which I know absolutely nothing. But I bought the whole game just for Blenheim because I'm interested in Marlborough and his battles. And this looks like a really good game on these two battles. Now, I have no idea where this video is going to go. I just set it up here and or I'm attempting to set it up. I've sorted some of the counters and it may just turn out to be a fancy you know, uh, look inside the box kind of thing. I can't tell you anything about Near Winden because I don't know anything about it. But I can tell you something about the sortation, the order of battle, and I'll show you the pieces. First of all, the game is absolutely gorgeous. Two beautiful maps, a gigantic playbook, and a rules of play. The playbook gives you all the information for setting up the game. Very thick, lots of illustrations. This is a study. Uh, I think the learning curve for me on this one is going to be quite steep. Like I said, I'm going to try to take it on today. But, boy, there's lo lots, of, lots of rules to learn. And uh, there's the rules of playbook. Similar thing, lots of illustrations. The rules clock in at, uh, what, about 24 pages. And battles in this period are quite structured. They are not Napoleonic in any sense of the word. Even the composition of the armies is different. And by showing you the pieces to the game, I think you'll see what I mean. Now, I did not even punch out the counters for near Winden. Since I don't know anything about the battle, nor the, uh, the war, I probably won't concentrate much time on near Winden. I want to learn Blenheim. So there sits their near wind encounters unpunched. Glenham was a horse of a different color. Now, in a lot of my videos, you might see that uh, sorting the counters and putting the game away is a big thing with me. I don't like games that take hours to set up, and I suspect this one's going to be a beast to set up. These are just the Glenham counters, and I've had to go to a very fine sort to um, organize the counters. Now, fortunately, the designer uh, has given you a very good order of battle for setting up the uh, counters. And boy, you're gonna need this. You're really gonna need this order of battle. So I caution you, for those of you who purchased the game, when you're cutting out and sorting the counters, sort them right from the get-go if you just cut out all the counters and put, lay them out on the table, boy, you're going to have a task uh, putting them in their brigades and wings. So I recommend you do that. Now, I've done that. They're in their wings and brigades, and I haven't even set up a single counter yet. As you can see, the board is completely blank. I've got no counters on there. So I'm just going to experiment now time here in Ottawa is what about 928 and I'm just curious to see how long it will take this thing to set up I suspect it's going to take a while now it makes this game so uh, unique and very representative of the period is this army card you get two in the game this is the Blenheim one and when you set up your game you're going to be putting the brigade counters on this map and the battalions on the larger map. So the armies are very structured. And as you're going to see, you've got a front line, a support line, and a reserve line, as does the enemy. You've also got these wings. You can see it's divided into one, two, three, four, five different wings. And each of them will have uh, a name. This one is the Blenheim Approach, the Unterglau, Wilhelm Farm, Lutzen, 
Lusingen Oberglau, Lusingen approach. So we're talking armies that are extremely structured. Now, as I was cutting out the counters, really punching them out, but uh, I use an exacto knife to cut them out because they're very thick counters, really nice looking. And as I was cutting out the counters, I realized, wow, there's not very much artillery in this uh, game. Th this is not Napoleonic warfare. The artillery is very much just a support arm of the infantry. So as he explains in the designer's notes, most of the guns, artillery, uh, are what they call battalion guns. They're attached to the battalion, smaller, lightweight guns, and semi-mobile. The artillery counters you get in the game are heavier pieces, and in this period, they were not very mobile. And uh, you're gonna see that as you punch out the game. You're not gonna see very much in the way of artillery counters. Okay, so what I'm gonna be doing for the next, I would suspect an hour or so, I'll edit that out of the film, is sorting these counters onto these uh, army sheets for brigades and then putting the battalions onto the map. And uh, I suspect a minimum of an hour, but uh, let's just see how long it takes. Anyway, I'll edit the video here and commence after I've set up or failed at uh, setting the game up. But whether I succeed or fail, I can say that this game is one gorgeous game, that's for sure. I'm determined to learn this at some time. I didn't mention the uh, time record track here. Of course, the infantry and artillery combat tables, which are very high quality, cavalry combat tables. And I think there's at least one more here. Yeah, the command movement tables. And uh, yeah, command movement tables. Now, warfare in this period, for those of you who have read it, is extremely structured. And I've seen very few games um, on this subject. War gamers that like to be able to do whatever the devil they want, move wherever they want, are going to be, I think, surprised that a lot of stuff is going to be out of your hands. It's a very rigid command system. But without further ado, let me get it setting this thing up, see how it goes. Okay, so it's 10 o'clock real time. So I've been at this 20 minutes, and I'll try to show you in 20 minutes what I've accomplished. And uh, I'm on very thin ice here. I'm not even 100% sure if I'm doing this right. But if I'm following the instructions, uh, you put the brigade counters on the chart there. And these are the brigades, front line, support, and reserve. Now here's where I'm very unsure. Let's go over to the tactical map. Okay, so here we are on the tactical map. Now I don't know if, we're, if I'm doing this correctly, but if the front line is Roe and Wilkie, that's what I've done. I've put some men here behind the purple line, which is the French start line. Then I put Ferguson, St. Paul, in the second line and Ross and uh, Wood, the cavalry, in the third line. Now, I'm only guessing if that's correct. There isn't explicit instructions on setting them up. So that took 20 minutes to arrange these counters. Let me do some calculations here at the current rate, how long it would take me to set up the whole game. And then I'll restart the video. Well, as I suspected, at the current rate, now I, setting it up for the first time is going to take a little bit longer, I suspect. Even then, I'm not sure what I'm doing. It took me about 20 minutes to sort two trays. So at the current rate, it would take me three hours to set this game up. So it would be, what, 12 past noon just to set this, uh, this game up. So three hours to set up a game. Wow. I don't know if I want to put that kind of energy into it. And this is no criticism of the game itself. I'm just trying to do a video here to show you what you're dealing with if you go to play this whole game. Now at this time, I don't know if I want to spend that amount of time setting this up. I suppose if you were playing two players, you had an opponent, you know, and your opponent's setting up his troops and you're setting up yours, you could 
cut that time in half. So that's, well, let's round off and say an hour and a half to set it up. Um, and maybe if you're really good, you can set up in 45 minutes per side. Don't know. I just know that I, at this point, I don't feel like spending three hours to set this thing up since I don't know the game at all. I think I'd rather study the rule booklet, how it's actually played, and look through the um, playbook and see if there's maybe a smaller scenario. And again, I'm only looking at Blenheim, the game that I'm interested in. Uh, I'm sure near Winden is probably the same thing. So I'll end the video there. Um, sorry I couldn't show you much more about the game, just that I, I don't know how to play it. And the amount of time invested just to set up is quite, um, quite daunting, you might say. But it is a beautiful looking game, there's no question. Um, I think it's as detailed as the, you know, the Bataille de la Mascola system, although I think it's perhaps easier to set up. I don't know. So whether I'll get back to this game, I don't know. I've got to study it a lot more than uh, I have before I could possibly play it. So I hope that tells you something about Banish All Their Fears. If you're a Marlboro fan, I think... This is a, you know, an in-depth study. You're certainly going to like it if you're uh, into the Marlboro period. So with that, um, maybe I'll go on to another game to fill my day. So uh, thank you for watching.